Witnessing the heart-wrenching scene of a sister's suicide, Kakeru spends his days in an orphanage where he meets a little girl called Yuka. Years later, Kakeru Satsuki, now a teenager with hair lovely as lavender, is enrolled in high school alongside Yuka Minase, a brown-haired teen. Their usual day is flipped upside down when they experience a psychological attack and are forced into an alternative realm known as the Red Knight. Unaware of the forthcoming events, they hold each other tightly, not letting a single moment separate them. The Red Knight, however, vanishes as quickly as it arrives, like a spring night's dream. Both are left wondering if their experiences were imaginary when they see the whole public staring at them as they hug each other tightly. Later that day, another student arrives with a greater amount of information about the event. As she approaches Kakeru and Yuka, the latter falls down unconscious. Kakeru carries her to the infirmary without wasting any time. Afterwards, they go out shopping while continuously being stalked by a mysterious figure. However, they relive the Red Knight occurrence when the two establish physical touch. A deep crimson night with a dark, dull moon teeming with horrific monsters bent on pursuing them. Kakeru and Yuka are sent back to the Red Knight realm. This time, they meet a powerful young crimson-haired woman called Misuzu Kusagabe, a senior at Rainbow High. As they flee, the two interrogate Misuzu about this realm, which he claims is another dimension constructed by someone. The trio attempts to make their way to the city's crystal towers. However, a weird insect-like woman emerges before them, announcing that they are not permitted to pass. Misuzu, Yuka, and Kakeru succeed in their escape to the crystal towers, where they come across a young lady trapped within a crystal. Misuzu feels she is an adversary who created this universe when she identifies as Lizette. The trio is attacked by considerably stronger opponents, earning them the moniker Black Knight, owing to their blackish appearance. But they soon return to the ordinary world. To unwind, the three of them go to a cafe. Misuzu requests that Kakeru remove his eye patch, showing a golden right eye, and asks Yuka if she can feel any electric charges she emits, which Yuka does not. While returning home, Kakeru notices his elder sister, but she is actually Shiori. The next day, Yuka and Kakeru are at the library looking for information on the Red Knight, and when Kakeru picks up a book titled The Maiden of Crystal Palace, he notices his sister's eye staring back at him with a letter placed on the ground telling him he has roused the devil. Kakeru, Misuzu, and Yuka discover that the moon has gone dark in the current world. Misuzu assures them that they will gather at the school if they are ever thrown into the Red Knight again. Misuzu agrees to teach Kakeru how to handle a sword, as he is so determined to protect Yuka. Meanwhile, lonely and concerned Yuka meets Yukiko, who brightens her day a little with her bright grin. Kakeru trains alone on the field after school with a baseball bat. Misuzu takes him and Yuka to her house after seeing him exercise, where she demonstrates her skills. She reveals how it was initially agreed that only one sword may belong to one person. But Misuzu defeated all five swords, driving her family to seek her life and prompting her to relocate to this section of Japan. The Red Knight reappears as Kakeru laments his anguish. As the Black Knight prepares to crush Yuka and Kakeru, shackles manifest out of nowhere, causing the Black Knight to flee. Meanwhile, Misuzu has problems battling Gula, one of the Black Knights, but she kills him off thanks to another student stabbing him. Kakeru is trapped under the shattered automobile with an unconscious Yuka when he notices his older sister staring down at him contentedly. Takahisa and Yukiko are revealed to be two of the few survivors of the Red Knight, with Takahisa able to manipulate fire. Yukiko gladly presents Takahisa to Yuka, Kakeru, and Misuzu, naming him Mr. Hero of Justice, after he saves her from a monster. While training, Kakeru notices Misuzu flying towards Yuka and leaps to deflect the strike. It turns out Misuzu was just testing his resolve. The next day at school, they are brought back to the Red Knight and ambushed by two Black Knights, Ira and Nvidia. Misuzu attempts to fight and restrain Ira, but she can't break the stalemate. Yukiko comes to her rescue. Takahisa ignites the Black Knights just as they are about to win, and the Red Knight ends once more. Yukiko puts on her glasses again, transforming her personality into a bubbly and outgoing freshman. She also demonstrates her regeneration abilities by repairing a big wound in her stomach. 
Yukiko informs them that she was born in the country of Transvania, where she acquired her skills after receiving a hug from Yuka. Yukiko then expresses gratitude to them for embracing her for who she is. Yuka faints again at school, and the school doctor, Saeko Akamine, diagnoses anemia. She also declares herself as Takahisa's legal guardian after discovering him living on the streets as a youngster. Following their visit to the infirmary, Kakeru and Yuka are introduced to the silent Kukuri Tachibana, who looks and sounds just like Kakeru's deceased sister, startling Yuka and Kakeru in particular. Meanwhile, Takahisa is involved in a motorcycle accident and discovers a barrier in the city's center that only he can cross. Kakeru begins his sword training with Misuzu at school, and the Red Knight soon follows. During the Red Knight, Misuzu is instantly engaged by Nvidia, forcing Yuka and Kakeru to flee once more. While fleeing, they are intercepted by Ira, who bars their exit from the school grounds. He first overwhelms Kakeru, but during a struggle guarding Yuka, Kakeru's abilities awaken, allowing him to detect his opponent's actions before they execute them, and Kakeru manages to defeat his opponent. Despite his win, Kakeru collapses on the ground, convulsing in misery. Kakeru is in a coma, suffering from agony and recalling his memories. His pals are concerned about his health and have all gathered around him. Misuzu tries a spell to heal him and save Kakeru from his suffering. His right eye, also known as the Eye of Aeon, activates, and history and present collide in a mind melt. The following day, Kakeru wakes up to find a weakened Misuzu passing out in his lap. Yuka happens to see this and utterly misinterprets it. Kakeru eventually finds Yuka on the school rooftop and convinces her that Misuzu and him are only friends. At that moment, Yuka admits her affection for him, expressing her desire for a kiss to validate their relationship. Kakeru disagrees, causing Yuka to flee once more. Just as Kakeru attempts to follow her, the Red Knight descends yet again. A fight breaks out between their team of fragments and the Black Knights. Misuzu prepares the fight as the battle begins, and Yukiko begins the fight until Kokuri exposes her abilities and slaughters all the Nightmare Blobs and a Black Knight named Scholastica. Takahisa informs everyone that he has discovered Yuka's damaged back. Kakeru searches for Yuka, anticipating the worst. With no one to defend her, Yuka urgently attempts to flee and forgets about Kakeru and Misuzu. Fearing the worst, the others hunt in vain for Yuka and divide up to find her. While Kakeru and Takahisa search the school, the females continue their search. Meanwhile, Lizette wakes up to discover that she is alone and puts the crystal barrier to the test, where she talks to herself about Kakeru. The chief black knight, Aravitia, discovers Lizette's attempted escape and leaves the fragments to the other black knights. Yukiko tries to cheer Yuka up as she laments her lack of strength and fear that Kakeru is drifting away from her. Nvidia emerges, desiring vengeance against her opponent for tarnishing her face and body. To confront Nvidia, Kakeru employs the Eye of Aeon, landing a devastating strike before the agony cripples him. Superbia and Misuzu fight while the Black Knight reflects on Misuzu's Onmyoji ancestry. Superbia adopts the Kusakabe dual blade stance and assumes human form, revealing herself as Misao Kusakabe, a female fighter whom Misuzu once adored. Takahisa's fight with Nvidia continues, but both approach their limitations. When Yukiko and Kokuri come, they attack Nvidia. Yuka shouts out of nowhere for Kakeru, unlocking her dormant strength. The power of Nvidia, Misuzu's sword, and Kukuri's shackles all vanish. Yukiko stabs Nvidia in the skull. Misuzu says that Yuka possesses the perilous ability of nullification. Yuka faints as a result of using the power. The Black Knights discuss the fragments. The next morning, Yuka awakens to find Kakeru napping on a chair beside her bed. Misuzu and Takahisa talk about Yuka's strength, the Red Knight, and why they're being pursued by the Black Knights in the living room. Kakeru approaches Kokuri over the journal and requests that she leaves Yuka alone. Misuzu examines the barrier surrounding her house after Takahisa goes to look for Yukiko. Misuzu leads Kakeru to her dojo, where she shows him the mark burnt into her shoulder. She then wounds herself and provides Kakeru with Kusakabe's power by swallowing her blood. Yuka watches this intimate encounter before collapsing. She awakens from her coma while Kakeru and Misuzu fight. Kakeru's sight predicts Misuzu's next move, 
resulting in a wound. Yuka steps in and offers Misuzu a hanky for her injury before licking her blood and exclaiming she is no different than Kakaru. When Yuka and Kakaru get home, they do some housework when they hear a disturbance. Kakaru investigates and encounters Shiori, who attacks him with magic before telling him cryptically, you were the one who awakened the monster. Takahisa and Yukiko meet Sayako and find her mysteriously strung up with Superbia sitting near her. Takahisa becomes enraged upon seeing Sayako impaled by Superbia, which is precisely what his parents dreaded and hence deserted him on the street. Meanwhile, Shiori advises Kakeru that only he can stop the monster. They realize how strong Kakeru is, especially with the Eye of the Aeon. When Takahisa is shown to be battling a Superbia clone while Misuzu is facing the actual Superbia, things begin to heat up. Superbia flees as Kakeru and Kukuri arrive to help Misuzu. Misuzu understands that her and Superbia's level of power are way too far apart and drops her head in sadness. She realizes that she's too weak to fight a monster capable of harming her friends. Yukiko approaches the group as they discuss the Black Knights, all drenched in blood and crying, and reveals that she has murdered Takahisa. Shiori appears and teaches Kakeru and Misuzu everything they need to know about the Red Knight and the Black Knights, revealing herself to be a teenage magician and librarian for the Index, a secret magical organization. She also explains that Index shut Lizalot away 64 years ago with an unlawful spell. While Lizalot is confined, her soul can only be divided owing to her immortality, which is exactly what the Black Knights have accomplished. They broke her soul into seven parts and tossed them into other human bodies in parallel universes, which have now miraculously been reunited in the shape of Kakeru and his friends. If her soul's shards are recounted into Lizalot's body, she can grant her wish to destroy the Earth by casting it into an eternal damnation via the Black Moon. As a result, the Black Knights pursue them in search of their souls. Yuka attempts to defend Kakeru but faints again so Kakeru shuts her in a room to ensure her safety, and follows the others in their quest for Yukiko. Meanwhile, Yukiko is defeated by Misao, who brutally murders her and steals a portion of Lizalot's soul, preventing Yukiko from regenerating. Yuka comes unexpectedly and takes Yukiko's shard from Misao, throwing it at the red crystal, dissolving the steel and causing Lizalot to awaken. Lizalot awakens and kills Yuka before absorbing her piece. Kakeru imagines the flashback and tries, but fails to mirror the force. Avaritia teleports Misuzu and Kakeru out of the Red Knight to preserve the remaining shards, while Shiori stays behind to battle Lizalot beside Misao and Avaritia, who is now in his dragon form, Georgius. At the same time, Kakeru and Misuzu attempt to discover whether Yuka remains alive and to re-enter the Red Knight. As Shiori is ready to be consumed and slain by Lizalot, Kukuri comes and turns into Abraxas, the demon occupying her body, and Misao attempts to restrain Lizalot while Avaritia unleashes a blast at them. As the Black Moon approaches Yuka's universe, Kakeru and Masuzu debate what they should do if the others fail and then perform a ritual to strengthen Kakeru's skills. Misao arrives behind them and informs them that her beloved Avaritia has died, Abraxas has been slain, and Shiori has committed suicide. She also hinted that this may happen to Misuzu as well. Yuka appears after Misao dies. As Kakeru approaches, the enemy stabs him and drains his eye of Aeon with Misuzu. Everyone seems to be dead. And the two of them lived happily ever after, Yuka continues. Kakeru disagrees with this conclusion. As it turns out, everything in episode 11 was only Kakeru's imagination of what would happen if he tried to protect Yuka from Lizalot's attack. Determined to prevent those events from occurring, Kakeru resolves to prevent Lizalot from stealing his eye. He awakens in the infirmary, much to his astonishment. Misuzu says that he is still alive because Yuka negated the sword when he stabbed himself, and Lizalot couldn't fight since Yuka's abilities also nullified her powers. Shiori presents Kakeru to Abraxas, the spirit housed within his sister Kukuri's body. She goes on to describe why Kukuri is still breathing. The gang notices a change in the universe and watches as Yuka gets absorbed into the bed. The team rushes to the roof only to discover that the black moon is approaching 
and that Lizalot has locked Yuka in a crystal to stop her from utilizing the nullification ability. Kakeru wants Yuka's return and accepts Lizalot's desire and surrenders. Avaritia confronts Lizalot while Superbia defends Kakeru. Abraxas utilizes the time obtained by Avaritia to send Shiori's fragment to Kakeru, and Superbia notifies him that he may be able to imprison Lizalot in a spatial rift with the Eye of Aeon. Misuzu summons the prohibited Dojikiri Yasutsuna sword to protect Kakeru from the Red Knight. While Kakeru is fighting Lizalot, the voice of Vela, the former holder of the Eye of Aeon, emerges in Lizalot's thoughts, telling her that destroying the planet is silly. On the other hand, Lizalot is determined to capture the Eye of Aeon, a part of the Emerald Tablet for herself. Using the Eye of Aeon, Kakeru predicts Lizalot's reappearance and shocks her. When he seals her away with Shiori's fragment, Lizalot tries to run, but Avaricia stops her and the two of them are drawn into the spatial breach. Due to Lizalot's departure, Yuka is now free and the Red Knight begins to crumble. Misao expends the last of her power to restore Kakeru, Yuka, and Misuzu to the actual world. Only the trio are conscious of the happenings of the Red Knight in this world. Yukiko, Takahisa, and Saiko are still alive but have forgotten about the Red Knight and how they knew Kakeru and the others. Misuzu asks Kakeru and Yuka whether they want to follow her to Ayanas at the end of the narrative. With his Eye of Aeon, Kakeru discovers that the Black Moon still remains in the sky.